Oh my goodness. I have so many friends that live around this area. I had a bunch of people that came out from Dayton last night to crash the party. Dear friend Karen from Georgian's ministry ran all over the place with Georgian. I don't know, you came up and said hi. Where'd you go? There you are. Come on. I'm like, yes, Karen's here now. It's a party. So, uh, whoo. Awesome. Well, tonight, uh, <clears throat> tonight we're going to talk about the, the other two thirds of the heavenly hosts. Last night we spent way too much time talking about demonic influence. Way too much for my taste, but if you picked up the, uh, the red USB out there, there's 12 hours of stuff on it. Um, and, and all of the stuff we talked about last night, plus some, plus all of the notes. Tonight, we're going to focus on literally the other two thirds of the angelic hosts. The, 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 uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the two thirds that didn't mess it up. That's the deal. And you want to see deliverance happen in your life, you get your attention off of darkness, right? Last night it was kind of important for instruction that we draw people's attention for just a moment. So we don't want to be ignorant of the devices of the enemy, okay? That's important. But understand this, that whatever has your attention has your affection. It's a good note to take. I'm going to try to slow down tonight, Wilson. <laughs> whatever has your attention has your affection, for better or worse. Paul said Colossians, he said, set your affection on things above. Colossians 3, set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. Everybody ever heard this phrase? Don't be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. Well, I'd like to suggest to you that just because a phrase is clever does not make it true. Paul would say the only way to be any earthly good is to anchor your affection, your mind, and your heart in heaven and leave it there. It's the only way to actually be any earthly good at all is to be heavenly minded. You have access to the mind of Christ, access to the thoughts of God. It causes us to think different. It causes us to think higher. It causes us to elevate every conversation. And a man come up to me one time and say, it's a common question I used to get years ago. I don't get it too much these days. People have moved on to other things like politics. <laughs> he says to me, are we under law or are we under grace? Now, I know exactly who I'm talking to, right? Nobody under grace, has a revelation of grace, ever asks that question. It's like people that ask questions about giving. Nobody ever asks questions about tithing so they can have an excuse to give more, okay? Just never, <laughs> never, if people want to give more, they just do, you know? So, uh, are we under law or are we under grace? Ah, this is in the South, so I know who I'm talking to. He says, says this, and I said, well, so of course we're under law. I kind of took him back a little bit. I said, absolutely, I believe we're 100% under law. He looks at me and now he doesn't know what to think because that was not the answer he was expecting. Maybe that's not the answer you were expecting. You believe that, Bill? Absolutely I do. I said to him, wait a minute, which law are you talking about? Now, now he's confused. Well, the, the law, well, but the only law there is. Oh, I'm sorry, I said. You have apparently not been informed of the new law. It's found in Romans chapter 8. It says, there's therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ has set us free from the law of sin and death. Every lawyer on the planet understands the concept of an overturned law. And that is when a new law comes in, it renders the old law completely powerless and completely worthless, actually. You can go back and you can research, you can use it to research where we've come from, but it has no power anymore. Once a new law comes in and overturns an old law, the old law is just a historical relic. So now we are under a law, it's called the law of the spirit of life in Christ. And here's the ramifications of that law, and that is that you are legally bound to freedom. Boom, just let that just explode your mind for just a second. That's the deal. The law of the spirit of life in Christ has declared me to be free from the law of sin and death. The law of the spirit of life in Christ means I absolutely have to be free. Must. I have no other choice. So I want to be a good legalist. I'm the happiest legalist you've ever seen. Why? Because I'm legally bound to freedom. I'm stuck being free. How about this? If you really want to freak out a legalist, say, look, under the new law, if you live as any other way than free, you are actually breaking the law. Well, we don't want to do that now, do we? 
It's true. <laughs> what are we doing? We're not, we're not arguing with people on, on, a, on a carnal level. We're elevating the conversation. And that's, that's what I want to do tonight in talking about the angelic. It's the flip side of these things. So we want to break off demonic influence. We have to come up with some angelic ideas. We have to come up with some ideas, understand some things about God's belief about you that will completely upend everything that you've ever thought about yourself. We partner so easily with demonic influence, especially when it comes to thoughts about ourselves. I gave the, the staff this morning an example. It goes like this. Uh, I'm no sand expert, but we live in Florida. So I bent down one day and I picked up a pinch of sand and I brought it in and I sat there and I decided to see how many, how many grains of sand I could pick up in one pinch. And I stopped counting at around 400. I'm like, wow, this is crazy, you know. <clears throat> and I thought to myself, you know, if we could just take 10 grains of sand worth and let each one of those grains of sand stand for a thought that God has about us, a precious thought that God has about us. And if I could just agree with 10 grains of sand worth of what God believes about me, it would completely change my life. Just 10. Not asking a lot. Just 10. In Psalm 139, David says, How precious are your thoughts to me, O God. How vast is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they would outnumber the sand. That's all the sand. All the sand that's out there. Not talking about just what you can pick up at a pinch. I'm talking about the entire Sahara Desert, the entire peninsula of Florida. Florida is nothing but a giant sandbar being held together by a lot of love and Disney magic. I don't know. I just, I, I have no idea. But <clears throat> so I, I look at that and I begin to realize, you know, if the body of Christ could just come into agreement with 10 grains of sand worth of what God believes about us, it, we, we could turn the entire world upside down with a revelation of the love of God in one generation. I'm not asking for a whole desert. I'm just asking for 10 grains of sand, please. It's so easy for us to believe lies about ourselves because it brings to us a sense of humility. It's a false humility. It's actually a spirit of religion masked as false humility that causes you to come into an agreement with an identity that God has severed you from, that old man that causes you to walk in complete powerlessness. But God has actually rendered you to be a, 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 a capable of... Of, of, of having a staff, let's say it like that. Having a staff. Did you know that you have staff? You do. They're called angels. Ministering spirits sent to minister to those who will inherit, inherit salvation. Well, that's you. And so tonight we're going to go through some common questions about the angelic and understand some things about how angels work. Understand this, that there's no battle between God and the devil right? There's no spiritual warfare going on between God and Satan. That would be no contest at all, right? Zero, no contest. However, we do have biblical evidence on both sides of the cross that there is conflict between the angelic and the demonic. That's absolutely true. All right, so it's really important as we talked about demons last night and how demonic activity works that we understand the converse side. This is the side that we're to be aligned with so that you understand that in your, uh, let's say it like this, wrestling, not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers, seated in heavenly places, you can talk about all that tonight. But in wrestling with that, you don't do it alone. You actually have help. You have help against an outnumbered force, at least two to one, angels to demons. We know that much at least. However, we're going to talk about some basic answers to some basic questions about angels. Maybe questions you never even thought about. But it's questions our students have come up with in classes that we've done for many, many years. And they thought of some questions that I just, I would have never thought of in a million years. So I want to give you some of those tonight. And then we're going to do some, uh, some cool activation at the end that gives you an opportunity to, to, to give angels some assignment over, uh, over the lives of people in this room. It'll be a lot of fun. We'll have a good time. Turn to Psalm 103 for me and let's start there. Psalm 103, King David starts out this psalm going like this. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. By the way, who's David talking to here? Himself. David realizes that he is his own greatest instructor, really. 
when he's, when he's feeling the sense of the Spirit of God come upon him, he becomes aware, gives his attention and his affection to the presence of God, he steps almost, you're talking about prior to the cross, long before there's any old man dead on the cross, old nature done away with, David has a way of dealing with it where he steps outside of himself and looks at himself and says, look, you line up right now, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and everything in you. In other words, I'm leaving nothing out, David, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all of your iniquities and who heals all of your diseases. So everybody say the word all. all. If you ever want to expose unbelief in the body of Christ, use the all words. We love the word all until all includes people we don't like. Who forgives all of my iniquities and who heals all of my diseases. He redeems, he goes on to say, your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes, he goes on to talk about, righteousness and judgment for all, not to oppress, but for all who are oppressed. Last night we talked a lot about demonic oppression. God has made provision for this. He executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. Understand the judgments of God are for you. They're not against you. We could say it like this, that when you realize the judgments of God are actually coming against everything that's coming against you, then you start welcoming this. That's how the judgments of God become like, wow, this is a good thing? This is not a bad thing? Absolutely. Healing is the judgment of God against the injustice of infirmity when it attacks your body. Prosperity is the judgment of God against the thief that comes to steal from your provision. The judgments of God are for you and not against you. So he executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He goes on to say, he made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord's merciful, gracious, slow to anger, plentiful in mercy. He will not always keep his anger forever and he hasn't dealt with us after our sins and he hasn't rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as, This is Old Testament, you guys. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them who love him as far as the east is from the west. So far has he removed our transgressions from us. Like a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. And he knows our frame, and he remembers that we are dust. And as for man, his days are as grass, as the flower of the field, he flourishes, and the wind passes over, and it's gone. And the place where it was doesn't even remember it was there, but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon those who fear him. And his righteousness extending through your family line to your children's children, to those who keep his covenant, remember his commandments to do them. The Lord has prepared his throne in the heaven. His kingdom rules over all. Here we go. This is our key verse tonight. Gone all that way to get to this. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength and do his commandments, listening for the voice of his word. Bless the Lord. You as, now keep in mind, David, throughout the Psalms, is prophetically stepping across the timeline of calendars. And he's speaking out things that he could not have possibly understood in his day. He's releasing over us mandates that really aren't going to be inactive until, until the other side of the cross when the Holy Spirit comes upon the church. There's an interesting relationship that we have with angels before and after the cross. Before the cross, the angelic realm is actually messengers sent from God to reveal the plans of God over mankind. And after the cross, everything changes. After the cross, you and I, filled with the Holy Spirit, have direct access to the mind of God, direct access to the mind of Christ, and from that vantage point, you are given access into things angels long to look into, First Peter tells us. In other words, angels are waiting to get a revelation from who? 
well, they want to hear it from God, but God has actually done something fascinating with those made in his image and likeness. That is, he's filled us with his Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, whose expressed desire is to guide us into all truth. And what he wants to reveal to us is his plans, intentions, and purposes. Now, the, the, the hierarchy, in a sense, has been flipped. When God reconciled us back to himself on the cross, now made in his image and likeness, filled with the presence of Jesus Christ himself, who is the word of God, when you speak what is on harmony with the heart of God, who then becomes the voice of the word in the earth today? You. When you offer an issue, prophetic declaration, you actually unveil and reveal the heart of God over your region, your city, your family, your house, your job, your finances, your health, your life. And there is an innumerable company of angels assigned to you. And if you never repeat the word of the Lord, it appears that they don't seem to have a clue as to what in the world to do. Where do we get that? You might want to write this down. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 says this, that the manifold wisdom of God might be made known, listen to this, by the church to principalities and powers in heavenly places. What has God done now? He's hidden the wisdom, all of the wisdom of the universe and all the wisdom of his plans, intentions, and purposes in Christ, in the Holy Spirit, in you. And when you unveil and reveal the wisdom of God, what ends up happening? Now you have just unveiled the plans of God and the assignments of God to principalities and powers in heavenly places. So now angels are waiting for their assignment from who? Let's go back to 103, Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, you his angels who excel in strength and you're doing his commandments, but you're listening for what? The voice of his word. Jesus Christ is the word made flesh. Now Jesus lives where? In you. And when you speak what's on his heart, you in the earth today become the voice of his word. There is, there is angelic assignment over your life that is just waiting for you and I to get a clue, a clue enough about the heart of God and what he is, is intended to do so that when we speak it out, there's an entire company of angelic hosts sent to minister for you on your behalf, going before you in everything that you need to prepare the way. And so we're going to talk a little bit tonight about how that works uh, and, uh, and see if we can... Uh, bring some level of, of understanding and clarity. And you're going to walk out of here tonight going, oh my goodness, I did not know. I did not know I was this surrounded by such a cool staff. You just are. <laughs> by the way, every time I talk about this subject, and I love it, I spent the day um, with, uh, with uh, Micah and, and uh, Wilson and uh, Pastor Van, and I'm sitting there just going, man, Hanging out with these guys is so cool because Micah sees angels. You notice that or not? How many of you have seen angels? You know that you've seen them. Truth is, every one of you has seen them. Many of you just don't know that you have, right? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Angelic beings are referred to more than 370 times in the Bible. I'm going to go through this relatively quickly. All these notes are on, on that red USB back there. Try to pick up here what you can, though. So I want to take some time for uh, activation at the end. Angels can take on human appearance without being confined to a human existence. They can communicate to people in dreams and visions. They can move and act at will. They can appear in a way that causes awe or fright or fear. It's why angels, a lot of times when angels appear to people, one of the very first things they say is fear not. Why? Because in our encounters with the angelic, it freaks us out a little bit. <laughs> they can com communicate or appear in a manner in which you can talk with them and not even realize what they are. As created beings, angels are actually mandated to obey God. Psalm 91, 11 says, For he will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. They'll bear you up in their hands lest you dash your foot 
against a stone. Psalm 103.20, we just talked about, bless the Lord, you as angels. You excel in strength and do his commandments. Angels have the ability to discern good from evil, but they actually have a will to choose both. In 2 Samuel chapter 14, verse 17, it says, your maidservant says, the word of my Lord the king will now be comforting, for as the angel of God, so is my Lord the king in discerning good and evil. Interesting. Angels actually have, even though the mandate to obey God, have actually a will to choose. Angels function, according to Hebrews 1.14, as ministering spirits for us. It says, are they, speaking of angels, not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation. According to scripture, they offer help and assistance, protection and security. Give proclamations to groups or individuals. And they unveiled revelation prior to the cross. But now, as we saw earlier, we unveil the revelation of God's intentions and plans to the angelic. How many angels are there? This is some questions that I got from class one time. I said, anybody got questions on angels? And this is some of the questions I came up with. How many angels are there? In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22, it says, you've come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. Where do we get the idea that a third of the angels fell from heaven? It's found in Revelation 12, 3 through 9, implying that a third of the angels fell from heaven. It says the dragon, the, ser dragon, the serpent of the devil, took a third of the stars, which Bible scholars believe is symbolic of the angelic realm, to earth with him. <laughs> How do people react to angels? We collected some reactions over the years, students that were in our school. And uh, they matched the, the reactions of people in scripture. In Daniel chapter 10, when they come revealing the glory of God, people have a tendency to fall, oftentimes face down. They appear as human in Genesis 18, 8. You can sit down and have a meal with them. It's interesting. You understand that God has a value for food? Just an interesting side note. Every time you see a picture of the resurrected Christ in his glorified state, he's hungry and he wants to eat. Hey, you got any fish? Hey, you got, I think nowadays it'd be like, anybody got any wings? I don't, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> oh, whoo. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 2 and 4, it says, Behold, a great earthquake, and the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow, and the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. Where do we get the idea that angels have a will? Well, Jude chapter 6, or Jude, excuse me, Jude verse 6 says, The angels who did not keep their proper domain but left their own abode, he is reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for judgment in the great day. This is an interesting thing. Somebody asked, What about angels assigned to you? Well, according to Matthew chapter 18, verse 10, it appears that you have angels assigned to you from childhood says, take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I say to you, this is Jesus talking, that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father. Fascinating. How do angels worship? Well, Revelation 7, 11, all the angels stood around the throne, the elders, the four living creatures, and fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God. Where do we get the idea that angels can look like people? In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 2, it says, don't forget to entertain strangers. By doing so, some of them wittingly entertained angels. This is an interesting thing. How common was angelic activity in the early church? I think more common than they write about. In Acts chapter 12, verse 14, you guys remember the story that Peter is in prison. And the, the church is gathered together to pray for Peter's release, Right? And you remember the angel of the Lord comes and walks Peter out of prison, personal escort. You know, it's like early version of supernatural Uber. And he walks Peter out of prison, and then Peter goes to the prayer meeting and knocks on the door. And you remember the girl answers the door, and she comes to the door, and she hears Peter's voice. Doesn't open the door. She freaks out, and she runs back in and tells the prayer meeting, it's Peter. He's, he's at the door. And what's their response? The response of the church, it must be his angel. In other words, they must have killed him, and the angel assigned to him has now come to tell us about it. 
Here's how common angelic activity was to the early church. The early church had more faith to believe that it was an angel standing there knocking at the door than they did that God answered their prayers to release Peter from prison. (laughs) That tells you that angelic activity was crazy common, all right? (laughs) I just love that. (laughs) Oh, it must be an angel. It's only an angel. (laughs) All right, I got to tell you some angel stories. We got some more questions, but I got to tell you some angel stories. I've had three encounters with angels that I know of. I'm I'm talking about where I physically saw them with my eyes. I perceived that they were in a room in a spiritual sense, but in terms of physical beings, I've had three encounters that I'm aware of. One of the encounters happened, dear friend of mine, Alex Morales, is a uh, associate worship pastor and associate pastor and a worship pastor at a church called True Life down in Austin. You know, I used to travel together a lot in ministry, and we were in Boston one time, and I wanted to go to Cheers because... I just wanted to. And, uh, and so we parked on the other side of Boston Commons. It was a cold day. And get out of the car, the parking garage. And I walk to, to go into the Boston Commons, the big park area with a lake down in the middle of it. We're going to walk corner to corner across this thing. It's a huge park. And as we step onto the Commons, I look off to my left. And sitting up against a building is a homeless man. And this guy uh, has a, a, uh, a styrofoam cup that's torn a little bit of change, a little bit of money in it. And he's sitting there just kind of huddled up, but I can see his face and he's staring at me and his eye is black and his lip is bleeding. He's clearly been treated very badly. And my heart was moved for him, but I, I look and I, I feel like the Holy Spirit's drawing my attention. At this time, I was really going, God, I really want to see your activity in the earth. I want to see what's going on here. And and if, if, if you can just unveil the angelic to me, but in a way that's not just going to freak me out, all right? I, just, I mean, this is kind of early on. I'm like, okay. So, so I'm looking at this guy, and my attention's drawn to him, and I just kind of study him. But we keep walking across the commons. But I can't stop thinking about this guy. I feel like, man, I, maybe I should go back and minister to him. But I just keep walking. I feel like that's not the point in the moment. I get across the other way, and right up next to Cheers is the same guy. Styrofoam cup, torn, black eye, bloody lip. And I look at him, I mean, he's wearing the exact, it's the exact same guy. Now I'm freaking out a little bit. Because I'm looking, I'm thinking, there is no way this guy got around us to get here. And I think to myself, when we walk back across, if I see that same guy... I will stop and talk to him. Now I'm thinking about how, how am I going to engage an angel, all right? I just want to tell this story because I want you to understand that I'm no pro. When it, I can teach this, and I know it's true, all right? But trust me when I say, when you are knowingly standing in front of an angel, and he doesn't look like you expect him to look, and suddenly you get this revelation that it is what you think it is, you just kind of go blank, Okay? So I walk back from Cheers, we get done, I walk back across the commons, my friend Alex, Tracy's there, my wife is there, and Alex and I are just kind of walking and, and chugging along, and here we see the same exact guy. There he is. He was over there, now he's back over here again. And I thought, oh, all right, here we go. I'm going to engage this guy. I know, I, I'm, I'm looking at an angel. I know I am. And I reach in my pocket, and I pull out whatever change I had, money I had, and I walked over. And I just bent down in front of him just like this and I put it in his cup and Alex is standing right behind me. And I put it in this guy's cup and I looked at him and I said, I know who you are. (laughs) Right, that was the only plan I had was to say that (laughs) phrase, right? When I say, I know who you are, he smiles and the blackness around his eye goes away and his lip totally heals up and the blood goes away. And he just stares at me and smiles. And Alex, behind me, starts freaking out, (laughs) wigging out. I love it when he tells this story, because it's so much better than the way I tell it. He makes me actually sound so much better than than I was in in the moment. And I just stood back up like this and went, we got to (laughs) go. Right? And Alex is walking along behind me going, wow, wow. Did you see that? Yes, I saw that. Just keep walking. Let's just keep walking, okay? Here here I am, standing in front. Now I know I'm in front of an angelic manifestation right in front of me. 
I feel so much peace, love, joy, and peace. And I go completely blank. I knew if I stayed right there in that moment, I, I, I would just, I just didn't know what to do. And it was just like, okay, that's all I need. I'm going now. <laughs> all right? Understand, it doesn't matter how long you've been a Christian. When you do step across this threshold into the reality that heaven and earth are colliding a little bit and one's leaking into the other, it can freak you out in the best possible way. One day, uh, I'm, I'm uh, uh, running down my driveway. We have this long driveway and kind of winded through the trees, and I'm running down my driveway. And I say, God, I want, I want more of that. I want to see more angelic activity. So I was like, okay, okay, I'm going to stand in here. I'm going to close my eyes. God, I'm ready for whatever. Just open up, just peel the veil back from the physical world. Let me see what's going on in the spirit. And I thought the minute I opened my eyes that I was going to get to see. And I opened my eyes and nothing, nothing. But I felt the voice of the Lord say, pay attention. Your attention's in the right spot. Just pay attention. I'm like, okay, I'm going to pay attention. On that day, we were going to take my parents to the zoo down in San Antonio. We get down to the zoo, and I'm sitting on a bench with my dad while the kids were off in the butterfly house or something. We're just hanging out. And all of a sudden, here comes these two people, two uh, relatively young, middle-aged people. They look exotic, man and a woman, but I, 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 don't, I can't tell where they're from, but they're staring at me. And as they're walking, they're looking at me, and they're both grinning, just ear-to-ear -ear grinning. And as they walk by me, it's, it's kind of like this. If I'm walking towards you, and then they turn like this, and then just keep on going. It was the freakiest thing. And I felt the Holy Spirit say, there's two, they'll be with you all day. I went, okay. Now, sometimes you get an impression from the Lord, and you know the voice of the Lord. If you've cultivated a relationship of intimacy with God, you know the voice of the Lord. But at the same time, sometimes it's, 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 a, it's an impression that will often leave you with this sense of, you always have to have faith when you're hearing the voice of the Lord. Is this me or is this God? And I was pretty sure this was the Lord, but still I wanted to test it out. And oddly enough, I tried to avoid these people all day, but I couldn't. I would walk away from them and I'd turn around, boom, there they would be. And they're standing, you know, less than 10 feet away from me for the majority of the day and they're staring and smiling, <laughs> right? And it didn't matter where we went. Let's, let's go in the reptile house. Angels clearly don't like snakes. And I don't know why, honestly, I, I don't know why I'm ditching these people, right? But I'm, we're kind of playing a little bit of a game of cat and mouse and everywhere I went, I come around a the corner, blah, there they are, you know, and just... I mean, it was crazy. Now, I'm not telling Tracy anything about this. <clears throat> so we decide it's time to leave the zoo. Dad wants to go have some lunch, so we're going to go have lunch. Now, San Antonio is a big city, millions of people. And so we leave the zoo and drive across the city to this obscure little place that has like an upstairs restaurant. We're coming up the steps, and we go into this restaurant. Now, we've left the zoo, and I, they're not in my car. I, they're not following me. I know this, right? I'm paying close attention. And we sit down to our meal, and lo and behold, we don't get sat down, and they're handing us menus, and here they come, in the restaurant, walking by, staring, just like this. <laughs> and they sit down at a table not 10 feet away from me, and go to order. Now you say, Bill, did you engage them? No, I didn't. But I studied them the whole time, because I wanted to see what they were going to order. <laughs> I don't know, you know? <clears throat> so I'm sitting there staring, and, I, and my brother-in-law sitting across from me, my dad and brother-in-law, and we're all families all there and everything, and he's trying to engage me in conversation, and I'm like, what? I'm sorry. And I'm staring. I cannot stop looking at these people. And finally, as we go to get up to leave, they go to get up to leave. And at that point, I went over, and I stopped this guy, and they're both just staring and looking at me, and I said, saw you guys at the zoo today. And he looks at me and goes, yes, God bless you. And then they both turned and walked away. <laughs> that was it. And I'm thinking, questions, I got questions. I got I to gotta have some questions. <laughs> we get back to the car, and I'm driving in silence for a good 30 minutes down the road, heading back to Austin. And finally, I can't keep it, keep it in anymore. And I said to Tracy, hey, Trace, did you happen to notice? And she finishes my sentence and said, those two people that followed us all day, I think they were angels. <laughs> I said, I know, me too. I totally like grabbed the guy and I just said, he said, God bless you. And he went, ah, I'm freaking out. <laughs> Tracy's like, did you see what they ordered? 
Did they get margaritas? I don't know. Is it? <laughs> you know, these are things you want to know, especially if you come out of, you know, the holiness movement. So, <clears throat> so <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm freaking out. I'm thinking, okay, okay, I'm going to engage. Next time I see an angel, I'm going to engage. Now, Tracy and I moved to Hawaii for a little while. We were pastoring a church over there, and I was working as an underwater videographer, diving with sharks three to four days a week, which I would say, you know, I'd preach on Sunday and go get in the water with sharks on Monday, and people say, which one do you think is more dangerous? <laughs> I'll leave that up to you. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm in Hawaii, and I'm going, okay, I'm going to engage with an angel, next time I see an angel, I'm sitting in the Walmart parking lot in Hawaii, and I'm thinking, it's, I'm going to engage. Next time I'm, I'm aware, I'm going to engage. I'm trying to think of questions that I would ask and ways that I would interact. And suddenly, I become aware that I'm being stared at. And I look to my right, and there's a car that I hadn't noticed before. And there's a guy in this car, and he is the stereotypical uh, uh, cover of the novel with the angel of the sword, thing. long blonde hair, piercing blue eyes kind of thing, like too obvious. And he's sitting there staring at me. But it's not uncomfortable, it's just kind of creepy, right? <laughs> and so I look at him and I think, is that one? I don't know, is it one? If it's not, I'm gonna ask him, I don't know, I'm not sure, I'm not 100%, okay. But I stare at him long enough to study and I just, I'm thinking, I'm gonna stare at him until he looks away. And he doesn't look away. He's just locked right in there. And, and now Tracy comes out and she gets in the car and what do I do? I drive away. <laughs> <clears throat> so I fail again, right? So, okay, 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 God, oh, give me another chance at this. So we pull in to another shopping center down the road. And as we pull into this shopping center, there's a guy sitting on a planter there with a big old palm tree thing in it. And it's the same guy. And I'm driving right by him and I'm sitting there just staring at him. And he's sitting there staring at me, just like this. Like, like angels are the most socially awkward <laughs> characters. As if, as if the human orientation class of heaven has had no effect whatsoever. So what do I do? I've, I've now just asked God for another opportunity. And I pull by the guy and I just gun it, right? I, I'm not, and when I look in the rear view mirror, he's totally gone. Now, I'm consistently going, okay, God, I, I know how this works. If you let me in on, on who's an angelic being, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to shut down. So this is why I have all these questions, right? A few more. This will be fun. Uh, do, are there angels assigned to regions, people, groups, and nations? Yes. Michael was assigned to the Israelites. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1 says that. That time Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. We know angels don't suffer decay like physical bodies. Luke chapter 20 and verse 36 says, nor can they die anymore, speaking of us, for they are equal to the angels, the sons of God, being the sons of the resurrection. Uh, they have assignments in worship. And in one case, there's even an angel assigned to collect your prayers. Revelation chapter 8 verse 3. Another angel says, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar, and he was given much incense that he should offer with it the prayers of the saints upon the altar before the throne. Do angels carry authority? Yes, they do. Revelation 18, 1. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority. Angels fight battles. We talked about there's no battle between God and the devil. Revelation 12, verse 7. War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. Uh, we're never to worship angels. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 18. Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels. Now, a couple of important things I just need to pull out here. This, there's so, I've got pages and pages of questions and answers and more things on, on how angels are identified throughout here. Uh, those are on the red USB out there, but I want to jump into this activation part. Here's a part that I, I really want to... Um, I want to grab a hold of this. Is, this part is, is so important. <clears throat> Oftentimes, we get this idea that, that we 
are to be subject to angels. Now Paul said in Galatians, listen, if an angel shows up and teaches another gospel other than what we've teached, let him be accursed. Which tells us that there's a, a possibility for angels to actually offer a will. and They have a will to choose to communicate something that's not from the heart of God. And that's true. Angels can, can be incredibly destructive, actually. In the Old Testament, there was a time where an angel was going to come and, and destroy an entire city. And God comes down and says, and I told the angel to stay its hand. Stay your hand, he says. Uh, one angel take, takes uh, 180,000 Assyrian soldiers out all in one night. Apparently, he had, had a bad day or something and just was in a bad mood. So angels actually, uh, oftentimes in the Old Testament, angels carried out, either by their own will or for whatever purposes or reason, carried out often destructive tasks that were ultimately attributed to God, which is why a lot of people have, I think, confusion about the nature of what God is like. If you take a look at at uh, a lot of the destruction of the Old Testament it was actually at angelic activity. And even in the New Testament, it speaks of uh, King Herod, uh, Herod who who's, uh, doesn't give praise to God, but takes it upon himself as is he, if he's a God, and it says, and the angel of the Lord struck him down, and he died. So apparently an angel was like, yeah, we're not having that, and you know, cut this guy down. So you have this, this thing of angels carrying power and authority. And because of that, we have this sense that if an angel shows up, we're going to be waiting for orders from it. I've already talked about that's not the case. But one of the reasons why people often believe, that, believe this is, is in Psalm um, chapter 8, verse 5. It's, it's, it's the verse that says, What is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you would care for him? You have made him a little lower than the angels and have crowned him with glory and honor. This is one of those instances where Bible translators took a look at the, at the text and went, you know what, let's, let's back off on this because I'm not sure that we should, we should put this out there as it's written. Let's make this safe. 1611 King James Version kind of started this trend. And, uh, and so uh, in the King James Bible, it says, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you would care for him? You made him a little lower than angels and crowned him with glory and honor. If you look up the word angels in Hebrew, you're going to find that the word angels is this word in Hebrew, Elohim. Now, the word Elohim is translated as God more than 2,000 times in the Old Testament. It's never translated as angels except for once. And that's here. As if the translation literally stated would just be a little bit too much for human beings to handle. See, the idea was we wanted so badly to make sure that we maintained a level of distance and separation between us and God that apparently we, we, we made sure that we cut out any reference or anything to our union with God in Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. So when you get to Psalms and you read this part, it should actually read like this. What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you would care for him? You have made him a little lower than God and crowned him with glory and honor. And that makes way more sense because we're actually told in 1 Peter that we are going to judge angels. You and I actually carry an authority to judge angels. Ministering spirits sent for us. And if you think that you were created a little lower than something, then you find yourself feeling like you're in subjection to it, which means that you have the ability to be deceived either by a demonic power or an angel operating against the will of the heart of the Father. But when you begin to realize that you've been made, you're not God, but you're made in his image and likeness, and you've been made a little lower than God, and you have been crowned with glory and honor, which he never gave glory and honor to an angel, never crowned an angel with glory and honor, but he crowned you, then you begin to realize whether it's angels or demons, they're subject to you, not you to them ever, anytime, at any place. And this is such an important revelation to understand because when you get this in your spirit, then you begin to realize that the heavenly hosts that are operating from God's authority are operating for you and the demonic forces of the enemy that are being depleted on a regular basis, no new ones being created, and they're always outnumbered and disempowered and purely operating by intimidation, they will lose their ability to bring you into partnership with the spirit of fear. Why? Because you're never created lower than the angels. No angel was ever made in the image and likeness of God, but you are. And when you begin to realize that, everything spiritual and supernatural that shows up in front of you, now you actually carry the ability to exercise heaven's dominion over. Now, I don't order angels around. I, I just, I'm not comfortable with that. However, 
Here's the, here's the thing that we can do, and that is this. We can hear the word of the Lord, and we can declare it and speak it out. And from that vantage point, chains of demonic oppression are broken off of people, and angels assigned to your life, assigned to your region, assigned to things that have, are concerning to you, suddenly become clear on their assignment. And now you have a buffer zone around you. You have all of heaven operating on your behalf in that moment. And once you begin to release words of destiny, words of spirit and life over one another, what ends up happening is it's like the angelic realm is waiting. I think the angelic realm by and large is just flat bored because we still don't understand who we are. But when we understand who we are, like in this room right now, I didn't start out hot tonight, but I am right now. And, and I think the Bible says that angels are ministering spirits as servants of flame of fire. Whenever it seems like they start crowding into a room, because they're not omnipresent, they can only take up bits of space at a time, one place at a time. They can't be everywhere. But I believe every time we start talking about the angelic activity of heaven and they know that we're not only aware of their presence, but now we're also aware of the Holy Spirit within us and we're willing to give voice to the word of God. I believe in that moment, angels, like they are in the room right now, bend low because they're about to get assignment. It's like, here's somebody who's about to release over us what we are to do. Here's somebody who's about to make declaration over this region and over this city that's on the heart of God. And I think the entire angelic world is looking. The entire angelic realm and all the hosts are listening and listening for the voice of the word of God coming through the people of God who from a position of authority and royalty are right now, present tense, seated in heavenly places with Christ and from that position issue decree that gives them the assignments to come against everything that's coming against you. And so that is what we're going to do right now, all right? Wilson, help me out. Let's put Wilson to work this evening. Uh, where's Micah? Is he around? Is he in the room? Micah, come on up. All right, go ahead and just stand right down across the front here for a second. I want you each to pick, uh, huh, each pick six people. Bring them back up here with you. That way we'll have 12, just like the disciples. Go get six. I don't care who they are. Just holding you responsible. Once you get picked, come on up to the front. Mm-hmm. This is fun. Karen, it's been a while since you've seen us do this, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> she knows what's about to happen. This is always good. These are moments we've had people launched into ministry. Destiny happens. Healing takes place. Deliverance just becomes a byproduct of this life of surrender. It's, it's just very cool. All right. So we should have a dozen people up here. Fantastic. All right. And you guys are going to make uh, 13 and 14. So we got 14 people up here. All right. Now here's what I want you to do. I want you guys are ministry school tonight. You guys are our ministry team. Welcome. Good. Ministry team. Didn't know that you were, but here you are. What these guys are about to do, everybody can do, right? In order to be a ministry school leader, you have to have ministry school students can't be a leader without a student. So tonight, we're going to find a student. And that is this. I want you to scan the room. I want you to let somebody stand out to you. I don't know who they are. I don't care who they are. They may glow. They may, I don't, whatever. I don't know. However they stand out to you, when somebody in this room stands out to you, I want you to go get them and bring them back up here with you. And they're going to be your ministry team tonight. All right? So scan the room. Don't make it complicated. Don't overthink it. See them? Go get them. Go get them and bring them back up with you. <laughs> a lot of anointing on a hat. Especially one like that. I like that. That's a cool hat. <laughs> mm-hmm. Today, we went to... Uh, 
to her God's Bible school where my dad went to college and, and uh, ran into a guy out on the campus who was the director of student affairs and he gave us a tour and it was really, I mean, it was incredible. And we walked in, I found, went to the library and I found my dad's yearbook and saw a picture of my dad from 1955 never seen before and it was real heartwarming. And we walked into the, the main auditorium sanctuary there in Micah totally recognizes this angel that's just standing up there behind the pulpit and so it's been there a long time. I'm like, whew, you know, this heritage in this city is really awesome. If you call this city home, you're a blessed people. And one of the reasons why Tracy and I are consistently coming to the Northeast, we believe that God is igniting something in this region that, uh, that is meant to be a, a, a catalytic epicenter of, of a great awakening, a move of God, the likes of which the world has never seen, and it's going to spread from here all over the earth. We feel like we just want to be in the room when it happens. That's just the deal. Okay, ministry team, here's how this works tonight. Every one of you can hear from God. All of you can, all right? And uh, people say, well, I I didn't know I was prophetic or I'm not a prophet. Well, stop for a second. Is Jesus prophetic? Yeah, does he live in you? Yes, then it's spiritually illegal for you to say that I can't prophesy, okay? At the very base level, prophetic declaration is speaking what's on the heart of the Father. And what we're going to do tonight is we're going to release some words over your life that I believe are going to release angelic assignment into your life to bring about the breakthrough that God has appointed for you. Now, God could come in. Here's the interesting thing is that God could come in and just do all of this himself. And listen, the message of the gospel is a message of Jesus Christ. We don't worship angels. We don't pre- you know, preach and teach angels, demons, and all that stuff. That to me is, that's, that's stuff that we need to be aware of, and so we get educated with conferences and things like this. But the gospel itself is the message of Jesus, Jesus Christ and him crucified and us resurrected with him. And uh, my friend Godfrey says it like this, that the gospel is summed up in this, that God in Christ came into the darkness of your religion to expose its great illusion and entered into your confusion and took the abuse of your rejection, turned it all into your adoption and raised you up with him to heaven and That's why the gospel is such good news. I love that. So so that's the message of the gospel. However, God has chosen to not work alone. He's chosen to create angelic beings, angelic beings with will. A third of them fall. He's chosen then to create people made in his image and likeness with whom he actually cares about your opinions and what you think. And he chooses to partner and pair us up with this angelic realm so that you and I begin to learn the nature of our identity. And that is this, that you are a divine convergence zone between heaven and earth. And if you don't realize that, then you'll just basically operate only aware of this world of form when in fact you're meant to be more aware of heaven than you are of earth so that you can bring heaven into this realm which is why I love this house and I love Van and Lori and what they're going after in God because it's like, man, we're, just, we're gonna open up, just to v- pull the veil back and let heaven just come to earth. That's why I love this song that they did tonight. Ah, oh, gets my blood pumping. Man, if that doesn't light your fire, your wood's wet, all right? <clears throat> so, so every single one of you can hear from God. And so tonight, here's what I want you guys to do. Ministry school students, that's the people who were just brought up I'm going to give you the assignment to scan this room, and I want you to pick one person out. You're not going to go to them. You're just going to notice them. And when you notice them, I want you to turn to the the leader that brought you up to the front, and I want you to tell them who you chose. And then together, you guys are just going to, right where you're standing, focus in on that one person, right? Now go ahead and just, students, Choose them and then tell your leader who you've chosen. One of the things I want to let you know tonight that we're going to do is we're going to keep this positive and encouraging. This is not the kind of prophetic ministry where we're unveiling people's junk, right? It's really important that you understand that. And and please, hear what I'm saying, guys, up here. Tonight, what we're doing, we're giving an angel's assignment by speaking the truth of the precious thoughts of God over a person's life. And the reason I say this for public ministry is anytime we do anything like this, somebody says, oh no, this sounds like a prophetic sort of an activation. If anybody's got like sin in their life, they start repenting like mad crazy, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Which, yeah, that's probably good. Maybe some of you need to do that. However, however, 
uh, uh, whenever we, we get into that mindset, what ends up happening is people suddenly start partnering with the spirit of fear and it shuts everything down in the room. So for that cause, for that sake, and I know that not everybody in here knows everybody, we're going to tell these guys, make sure to keep this positive and encouraging, right? We're going for releasing the destiny of heaven over people's lives. Also understand this, no prophetic word can ruin your life. You have the ability, you have the, your hand on the flush handle. You can flush any prophetic word you ever hear. So if something doesn't resonate with you, you just reach up and go, all right, no problem, no big deal. We're gonna applaud the fact that these people are going to do their very, their, their very best to rest and surrender to the voice of the Lord to speak through them tonight. Sometimes words come out that don't mean anything to you in the moment, but that doesn't mean they're necessarily wrong, okay? Uh, today, uh, just sitting in a room, sometimes it's just the just slightest impression. I looked at youth pastor Jordan. I said, man, I'm just, you're just going to be a student, eternal student. And, uh, and he's sitting there, and he's got his look on his face, and afterwards he walks up to me and says, I, I just found this journal that I haven't seen for years, and inside of the front of it he'd written Always be a student. That was the word. It's like I looked at him and said, always be a student. Inside, first thing he'd written in this journal is always be a student. And, you know, I, I, I didn't hear that. I didn't hear God say, tell him this. It was the slightest impression when I looked at him, just the first thought that came to mind. Oftentimes, that's how you'll hear from God, is when you look at somebody, it's the very first thought that just comes to mind. You see a person, you see courage. You see encouragement. And what happens if you do look at somebody and you see something that's negative, right? Uh, it, it happens every now and then as you look at somebody and you see, well, you know, something that's maybe, you know, dark or whatever. It's my friend Joel here. Let's say that I walk up to Joel and I see that Joel is lonely, right? Let's say that I, I get this impression that Joel is just lonely, which I don't get. He's not, okay? But <laughs> let's just, just pretending right now, right? Let's say that I saw that. Dark, lonely, uh, you know. Now, I could walk up to Joel and say, man, I just perceived that you're lonely. And Joel would be like, whoa, yeah, I was just thinking about how lonely I am. And I'm thinking, whoa, that's amazing. I'm a prophet. I'm going to go print business cards now. <laughs> right? <laughs> so what have I just done? I've essentially used this diagnosis to validate a prophetic gifting on my life, but I haven't done anything to help him. This is really awkward. I just diagnosed a problem, but I haven't, even, I haven't done anything to, to bring a, a cure. We don't cure problems by exalting the problem. We don't cast demons out by drawing attention to the demonic. We cure problems by grabbing hold of the solutions of heaven. We come against darkness. We resist darkness simply by being the light of the world. So when I look, and let's say that, that, that new, this is New Testament prophetic declaration over a person's life. Let's say that I look at Joel and I see loneliness or I see some darkness or depression or whatever. So I walk up to Joel and I just go, what am I doing? I'm reaching back into he heaven's medicine cabinet, and I say, I just declare over you that a season of covenant relationships being brought into your life where God's going to surround you with people who know exactly who you are, going to speak words of spirit and life into you so that you never walk alone. I mean, to mention loneliness, but what have you done? You've now brought, that's a good word right there. You've now brought into, <laughs> you've now brought in a solution Without exalting the problem, you're exalting the solution. That's Jesus. Jesus never lived in the problem. He always lived out the answer. Never exalted the problem. He always purely lived in the answer. That's what we're going to look at tonight. As there's people in here who may not know the destiny of God over their life. They may not know that they have a plan and a purpose of God over their life. But tonight as you unveil and reveal some things that they maybe don't believe about themselves, we're going to believe is the Holy Spirit is going to ignite within them an agreement that comes into agreement with what God believes about them, right? So what I'm going to do is one by one, or two by two, I'm going to have you come to the front, and we're going to ask the student first, who did you pick? And then here's what I want you guys to do. I want you to ask God, let's do this. When you've chosen somebody, don't do this part together, do this separately, all right? So you don't tell each other what you're getting about the person that you're focused on. I want you to ask God to give you, let's go for a word and a picture, Let's try that. Some people see pictures really, really easily. Sometimes, in order to see clearly pictures, you just got to close your eyes and let God just paint on the back of your eyelids a little bit. The childlike, I'm giving you guys just a couple of minutes to do this, the childlike imagination is not some new age idea. 
It's a limitless canvas upon which God starts to paint a limitless, boundaryless existence, giving you dreams in your heart that begin to mirror the boundaryless, limitlessness of a limitless God. And children have no problem exercising the imagination. I think it's an amazing gift. But as we grow older, we start shutting it down. And one of the best parts about an exercise like this is it starts to reawaken that childlike wonder and that ability to dream all over again. And this is absolutely a non-negotiable for me because Jesus said, unless you become like little children, you can't even see the kingdom. And the kingdom belongs to you. Kind of nice, if we can see it. So part of this, this house is prophetic destiny. Partnering with the angelic to bring about the plans and the purposes for regional transformation over the city, over this community, over the lives of people in this, in this region is to actually reignite that childlike imagination within you where you see that nothing is impossible. Can a city be saved in a day? Yes. But it's going to take a child's imagination to see it. So again, you're scanning the room. Ask God to give you a word or a picture. And we're going to let Micah and whoever you brought up here go first. Come on. All right. Uh, go ahead, Micah, and grab that, that handheld microphone right there. Come on up front and center, right here. All right. Micah's ministry school leader, and what's your name? It's Brittany. Brittany is a ministry school student. So I'd let, hold the microphone there. Brittany, and Brittany, who did you choose tonight? Um, this beautiful young lady. Right there? Yep. Fantastic. Go ahead and stand up, if you would. Yeah. You. <laughs> Awesome. Brittany, what did you see and what did you hear? Um, the first thing that I seen was beauty. Um, I felt like that's what the Lord just kept speaking over you was beauty. Um, then he showed me a picture and it had tears in it, but above the person who had tears, it was actually God crying over them, catching their tears as he was crying for the things wow. that they were crying about. So, but yeah, that's what he just kept repeating was beauty. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. Michael, what'd you see? What'd you hear? Um, I actually saw the same thing, um, beauty. And I saw like just around you the word also like worthy, you know, you were just worthy. And, and then it just <clears throat> softly said that you're okay. Everything's going to be okay. And he's not going to ever leave you. Never, ever going to leave you. And he is, he is your father. It's just, it was so warm and so comforting that you're okay. He's never going to leave you. Okay. Awesome. It's so good. Pass it back to Brittany. Let's use this as a teaching moment here. Good job, you guys. Yeah, I know you want to applaud. We'll give you a chance in a second. You did really, really well. What, what was your name? Lily. Lily, go ahead and stand up one more time. Just putting you on the spot, but you get to go first tonight, all right? Um, Micah, you did this fantastic, but you're a pro. You know this. All right. Brittany, I want you to do something again with that word that you heard, beauty. And you guys didn't collaborate on that, right? Fantastic. So we're already starting to see like the supernatural start to work in here. Is, I think angels are just sitting there going, yes, about the assignment that they're about to bring out in your life. What we want to do is we want to take words that we know are on the heart of God. We always start out by giving prophetic words as information. Okay, this is what I think I see. This is what I feel I see. This is what I'm hearing or whatever. But there comes a point in every word that, that's truly from God where you know it's got the breath of heaven on it, right? When you perceive that's the case, move from information to revelation. How do we do that? By changing a word from being informational to being a declaration, right? Now, Micah did this, and he did this very subtly. He just started talking about this is, this is who you are, and this is what's going to happen, right? This time, Brittany, you, heard, you got this word, and I think it's totally from God. That, that, that even in your weeping, God weeps with you. That God's catching every tear and he remembers every single one. And that his heart's for, whatever. And, and beauty. This time, here's what I want you to do. And this is just a way to activate this aspect of it. Stretch your hand out toward her. And I want you to give her the exact same word. But this time, I want you to start out with this couple of words. I release and declare and close your eyes for just a second, Brittany. I want you to feel, and all these, this is for all of you as well, right? Just going to set a standard for you right now. I want you to feel the weight 
of a crown on your head. I want you to feel the royalty that comes from being seated in heavenly places with Christ. And that what you're about to speak and decree over her life is to be established. And there was an entire angelic host about wait, waiting just to carry out this assignment as soon as they hear a word spoken with heaven's authority behind it. Having said that, beginning with the words, I release and declare. I want you to give her that word one more time. I release and declare that you are beautiful and that God cries over the things that you cry for and that he bottles up every last one of your tears. Yeah. Yeah. Just feel the weight of that. Feel the weight of that? Yeah. There's weightiness to it when you speak from a position of authority. And I, I absolutely agree. You carry, you carry the beauty of heaven. And I believe all the days of your life, God's going to assign you an angelic assignment around you that's going to remind you that every time that every, every uh, uh, word of darkness ever comes against you through somebody else or even your own thoughts, that where you look in the mirror and say, I'm not beautiful, that God's going to surround you with angels that say, no, you absolutely are. And it's not a point of pride to believe so. It's a point of recognizing that God has given you his image and his likeness, and he is nothing but beautiful. And that's who you are. Awesome. Do me a favor and go hug her. Good job. Hang on to that. Help me out. Help me out. Stay, stay up here. Stay up here. <clears throat> Okay, Micah, pick the next pair. Mm. <laughs> These two, awesome. Okay, who's the leader and who's the student? Leader, student. Leader, student. 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 Come on up to the front and center here. Student, who'd you pick? Jeanette. Jeanette, awesome, right there. And uh, what did you see and what did you hear? The mic. Jeanette, I saw you standing near the ocean <clears throat> and you saw other people walking on water with Jesus and you were reluctant because you're like, I don't know what's in that water. But God showed you that it was like the Bahamas and it was clear and he was going to show you exactly what was in that water and there was no fear and I heard him say, step out. Come on. Now words like this of courage and breaking off of fear, you just, you, you're, it's almost like, you're, like when oil and water mix like this, when you drop a bit of water into a pan of oil, demonic influence gets broken off. Now, what have you done? You've just given a person permission to have fear broken off of them and for freedom to come. What'd you see, what'd you hear? I saw strength. I saw where Jesus said that he was gonna take the fragments that remain just like he did the loaves of bread when he fed the, the thousands. And he puts it into a basket and it multiplies even then he's given it to you. And out of those fragments that remain from your strength that he's going to give you, you're going to feed multitudes. Come on. Awesome. Beautiful declaration. Love that. Give these guys a hand. They did a great job. Pick another. Let's grab these guys. Awesome. Yeah, you too. Oh, you too? Okay, jump up there. Who's the leader? Who's the student? I'm the student. Student, who'd you pick? I picked this lady. Right here? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. The microphone? <laughs> um, I felt like God was giving me a picture of like rolling green hills just for miles in this word of like endurance and perseverance and um, like whatever seasons of like weariness or tiredness that he just wants to lift you up. Like he wants to let you soar on wings like eagles. Like these, these hills, they're not intimidation, but it's freedom ahead. Come on. Okay, what's your name? Katie. That's fantastic. <laughs> Let me ask you this. What do you think in that word you have just released angelic assignment to do in her life? To let her see the freedom, to let her feel the strength of Christ in her. Awesome. So you never walk alone. Yeah. Awesome. Good job. Go ahead. Next one. What'd so you see? I, What'd you hear? 
I felt like I heard the Lord say, you are stronger than you know. Wow. And, you, and then I saw a picture of a tree and very deep roots. And that you have spent a lot of time with the Lord and you've built deep roots and your strength is in him. Fantastic. Good job. Give these guys a hand. It'd be great. Very cool. Well, when you're done, by the way, you can go have a seat. That way we know who we've picked. So, Cool. Hop up to the front and center. Student star. Who'd you pick? Um, I picked Betty. Betty. Right? Fun. Okay. I'm, I'm just like, I'm, I'm, I know that's your name. And it's just like, <laughs> I got up here and I'm just like, that person right there. And I'm just like, um, um, and then, yeah, it's like Betty. Um, and so what I saw um, was I, I, I saw you as a small child with a flashlight shining it into the darkness. And I felt that God was saying that he is going to use you to give others sight. Wow. Wow. Hang on one second. I'll give you the microphone back just a second. You're not done with that. All right? Stretch your hand out to her. I want you to just release over her just, to, just that, that word, that ability to release sight. Go. I release and declare yeah. that you will release sight to others wow. and those that surround you. Come on. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Betty, I don't know anything about you, but I kind of saw when I looked at you as a loving, I'm not sure if it's a mother or grandmother. I'm sure she can hear. Or a great grandmother. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of felt like you um, had some concerns with one of them, but that you were really going to break through with them. And, and I just uh, think that, that God, your concern is going to be taken care of by God. Yeah. Awesome. And think of this. I'm going to like this, and I want you to do just a, a declaration over her. And that is that there's a concern over any of, any of those kids or grandkids. I want you to just, just release, um, ask the Holy Spirit to release an angelic assignment over their life that will address her concerns. Um, yes, Lord, we, we just, uh, I just ask that You would just deal with her concern, Lord, just mm. take care of it, and, and Lord, with, with her children, grandchildren, and, and all, I know, Lord, that you will be there, and you're in her, and through her, you are in them. Yeah. Wow. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I just speak and release over you. <clears throat> An angelic assignment, knowing that your kids and grandkids don't walk alone. And specifically, uh, specifically the one that's holding the biggest place of concern in your heart is not walking alone right now, even though it seems like they are. But they're not walking alone. They're learning things right now that nothing else could ever teach. And there's a time appointed to them to dance with their father again. And they will. And they will. So Lord, I pray that the peace that passes understanding would guard and keep her heart and mind in Christ. Lord, I thank, I thank you that you have not left her alone in this and that you've heard every single prayer. I don't think you've prayed a single prayer that has gone unheard. Your prayers carry more weight than you think. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right. Good job, guys. Give him a hand. Pick uh, another G. Another G. You're third. <laughs> it's kind of cool, isn't it? Yeah. Fun. It's always unpredictable. We never know what's going to happen next. <coughs> All right. Who'd you pick? I also chose Lily. Lily, you got a bullseye on you tonight. <laughs> All right. What'd you see and what'd you hear? Um, so I just, I also heard beauty. So... God just really wants to tell you that you are really beautiful. And I just saw this picture, and you're just radiating like the sun, like just rays of sun are coming out of you, starting in your heart and branching out all the way to your fingertips. And just he's filling you so much with his love. It's like people see it when they see you. 
know, this whole service tonight might have just been for Lily. We have no idea. <laughs> God loves you that much. I love it. Awesome. Good job. So I got, like, the picture of, like, um, grass and, uh, like, a whole bunch of flowers. And your name is Lily, and that's beautiful as well. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I got the words outstanding and freedom. And so I just pray that God releases freedom over you Come on. right now in Jesus' yes. name. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Stretch your hand out to her and, oh. and do it like you mean it. Okay. <laughs> Lily, I declare freedom right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Whew. Great. <laughs> Carry authority. <laughs> it's going to stand close to you for a second here. <laughs> wow. If you want to kill giants, hang out with giant killers. <laughs> There's nine people in the Bible that killed giants. They were all friends of David. I'm just going to stand here a second. <laughs> awesome. Let's pull you guys up here. Yeah, come on up. Okay, so I chose the lady in the back in the pink shirt. Yeah, you. Barb. Yeah, her. All right. That's the her. Oh, no, that lady. That one? Yeah. Oh, that's red. Oh, I can't see. <laughs> um, okay, well, I was just getting, I kept seeing this really fluffy white fur, and I was like, what is that? I don't know if it was um, a dog or something, but I was like, okay. Oh, my. <laughs> so I feel like he was telling me, um, as, the, as the sun shines, like the, the sun, you know, the yellow one. <laughs> and, um, with the warmth that it gives, it's going to give to you. So he was just showing me this picture of um, this crazy white fur, you know, and it was warm. And it's this new, he's given you um, a new heart. He's taken away the heart of flesh. I mean, the heart of stone and given you a heart of flesh. So... Yeah, I just released to you this warmth that he has set upon you. And yeah, Jesus is good and he wants to give you him whole, like his whole self wow. and make you shine like the sun, both of them, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So. Can I say one thing? I have a white, small, lucky Pomeranian at home being Sweet. Wow. What you see? What'd you hear? Uh, well, Katie, I saw something similar, actually. I saw a big open sky with clouds in it, so big blue sky with white clouds, and then this sort of, it was lightning out of a clear sky, and the word chain breaker as the lightning came out of the sky. So I just declare over you that you have the power and the authority to break chains Come on. and destroy strongholds That's it. that the enemy has set up in anyone. That's how you do it, right there. Come on. You're awesome. Woo! <laughs> Do you know Micah here? Uh, not really. Not really? No. You, have you ever done anything like this before? Seriously? Because you have, you have a gift in your life, right? It's really important that you understand you have a gift in your life, and you've been seeing for a long time. Maybe you didn't know that you were seeing, but you've been seeing, and a lot of imaginations that you've had, that you just wonder, where in the world is this coming from? God's been talking to you for a long time. And I feel like tonight is really strategic. As a matter of fact, you're supposed to link up with this man right here. And he's going to give you some, he's going to give you like a, some downloads on how to walk in this, in this thing. Because after tonight, your life's never going to be the same again. Yeah. All right? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Take it, um, Micah. Run with it. I uh, picked the big guy in the back in the plaid shirt, and um, immediately I looked at you, and the Lord said to me that he was healing your sight, that he was, um, he was not just giving you new lenses to see through, but he was elevating the position from which you, the vantage point that which you had. And I, and I saw this picture of you like um, this, with this 
these big cheesy sunglasses on and this big <laughs> you know what eating grin. <laughs> <laughs> How do I follow that? <laughs> anyway, with the, the uh, site, that, that's kind of, that's wild because what I've seen is that you have a lot of hidden talents and, and maybe it's your, your site that's keeping you from seeing these and that you have great leadership. And I think there's people maybe around you that's maybe holding you back from this and God is telling me that you just need to be positive and believe in him and that it will bring all this out and it'll make a powerful impact on people around your life and you'll be a great leader. Come on. Wow. Come on. Oh. And I declare this tonight that you will see this and open your blinded eyes and take off the cheesy glasses mm. and let God show you where you need to be. Come on. Yeah. That's good. That's good. good job. That's good. Well done, guys. You two took it? You two. Okay. Okay. Um, this man right here, right? No, you. This is going to be you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, um, I just, I saw you and I, I just thought, um, the joy, and I thought that um, maybe, I don't know that's, if you feel like you're held back, but I just saw you like um, singing and giggling and, and laughing with the Lord, and that he, and, and, uh, that he is um, just going to bring you out of whatever, so that you're in your whole household, that I could see you like singing and, and laughing yeah. and joy in your household. And so, like, I don't know if the two of you are, I guess you're, yeah. <laughs> so I just saw you in your house and that, um, that angels are released to just bring so much to inspire you and instigate the joy and the laughter in you and into your household. Wow. Ooh. Love that. Mm -hmm. um, I saw the word safe place um, and I saw a big brick, like, wall surrounding you and that you are a safe place for people. Um, so I just release and declare that over you, that you'll be a refuge um, yeah. and that you'll embrace people as they come in and that you are that safe place for them. So, yeah. Mm, that's awesome. That's awesome. Good job, guys. Yeah. So good. Um, I picked this gentleman right here in the plaid shirt and the glasses. Pete. Pete, yes. And so what I saw to you, or with the one word that came to me, um, was provider. And so when I thought about that a little deeper, it's that leadership you provide for your family through the father. You know, so, and I assume this is your family all right here with you and your son. So, good job. Come on, good. It's cool. I just heard the word mentor and like, there's people you're supposed to mentor and pour into. And I saw a picture of you build, make, forming bricks and then like placing them in a wall. And I just feel like I was saying he sees every bit of a servant. You just have such a servant heart. I mean, I know that about you. And that he just sees every single act of service you've done. And so just bless you to mentor young men. Awesome. All right. Now wait, let me add, add to this real quick. Whenever you, we're talking about angelic assignment being released. And so, you know, that God's, let's just say, for example, Pete is meant to mentor people. Now, God is going to start to give you, if he hasn't already, going to start to give you names of people that you're just, you know that you have a word for their life, right? And as you begin to pray for them in that secret place, you're just praying for them. They may, may not even know it. As you begin to pray for them, God's going to release over them an angelic assignment consistent with your prayers that's going to start to move in their hearts, causing their hearts to be drawn to what you have to release over them. At the same time, God's going to release into you a deposit so that you're going to be able to make deposits into their bank account. And that's how God's going to set up this mentorship. You won't even have to try to do it. It's just purely going to be an organic work, but your prayers will actually set up the assignment. All right? So I just declare over you that you carry that heart of a mentor. Yeah, and you've, you're, you have more kids than you think. Way more kids than you think. 
right? And more yet to come, more yet to come. I feel like in some ways, it's kind of like Abraham. Take a walk with me out in the desert. Look at the stars. There's your children. Like, whoa, there's no chance, no possibility that I would ever have an influence like that. But God's wanting you to see yourself differently so that you can walk in a supernatural, dynamic influence where nobody is an inconvenience to you. And every person that he's given you to minister to, he empowers you with enough strength to do it. So at the end of your ministry time, you're more energized than you were when you started. Yeah. All right, step up front and center. Get under the portal, the spout, the um, glory zone. It doesn't, it's, it, right. it's everywhere. Okay, it's everywhere. Um, <laughs> God spoke to me to talk to my friend that she has beauty. I see who, her, who is this? My friend Ari, back in the back. Oh, okay. Um, I see a sheep, like a, a shepherd. She's going to guide a flock to follow her to, to church. Wow. And um, she's going to be a, a, definitely a positive role model. What's what your name? My name's Ron. Stretch your hand out toward her. just want you to repeat what I say. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I release and declare. I release and declare. A revelation. A revelation. Of the influence. Of the influence. That God has meant. If God is meant for you to have for you to have from before the foundation of the world before the foundation of the world I speak redemption I speak redemption and grace and grace over your life over your life to walk in that influence to walk in that influence in Jesus name in Jesus name awesome Good job well done mm -hmm. awesome. what'd you see what'd you hear so right away, when he pointed you out, I just heard one word, and it was really short. It was just precious. I felt like God said you, that she is precious to me. And I feel like maybe, I don't, I don't know your life at all. I don't want to make any assumptions. But I felt like uh, I saw that there have been things that have come against you um, and have offended you. And God has said he is filling in all the gaps, all the, all the things that have come against you. He's filling those in, and he wants to remind you how precious you are to him. And what I saw was you painting a huge stroke in front of you. And it was kind of like you had a paintbrush and you were painting the air in front of you and it kind of stayed there. Whatever you painted, it was, it was light and it was, it, was, uh, it was like white or gold or something. But it, I felt like God was, was showing that you are, he's releasing creativity in you. And I felt like this was something where you were gonna show others how precious they were to God as well. You were painting a new picture for people of who God is and who they are in him. So I felt like that was cool when he said, you're leading a flock, because I felt like what I saw for you was that what you were doing was for other people as well. So. I don't know if this means any, I'm just gonna put this out there. I just got this real clear picture the minute you stood up. I saw you as a child, I'm guessing about age seven. I saw you in a room, it was a bedroom, but you were in, a, you were in the bottom bunk of a bunk bed and you were actually covered up with a whole bunch of stuffed animals. You were covering yourself up, and, and one of the stuffed animals was a big floppy-eared bunny. Does this mean anything to you at all? Okay. And I feel like I feel like I feel like right now, going back going back into that moment, you're asking yourself, God, where were you? And I feel like God's saying, I've never left you. I've always been there. I've never left you alone one single minute, and I'll never leave you alone. You're never going to be without my presence. And I'm going to redeem every single moment. Every single moment was ever done to you. Every single moment that even seemed dark and, and alone. I'm, I'm actually coming and I'm redeeming that moment. And, and somehow you're going to see glory in your life. You're never going to be held back by a past that, uh, that ever caused you pain. And every moment that ever caused you pain will be turned to joy. You're going to bring freedom to people. But God has never left you alone a single moment in your life. I feel like you just needed to know that tonight. And you are precious to God, and you are meant to carry influence. And all of this tonight is conspiring to, to in an entire angelic realm to say, yes, we've been assigned over her life, and up until now, we may have not known what we were supposed to do, but now we know. 
And so right now, God's offering breakthrough into your life right now. You can be breakthrough. There's going to be freedom from addictions. There's going to be freedom from all kinds of crazy stuff that's held you back. And, and you're going to find yourself having opportunities, but it's not just one opportunity. It's not just one shot. It's time and time and time again because the grace of God is going to flow faster to you than you can mess yourself up. Yeah, always be aware of this. The grace of God can clean you faster than you can mess yourself up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Fun. Good job, guys. Well done. Oh, my, my word was for Mark back there. Um, I got this word, and it was gifted. Um, I heard the Lord telling me that you have many gifts, but you're unsure of how to use them properly. And you're afraid to step out and take that next step. Um, he showed me sort of this, this uh, storm, and you were frantically trying to put up a wall, and it was just being torn down over and over again. And um, the Lord was saying that don't put up a wall. Don't, don't try to fight the storm. Let me calm the storm for you. Um, let me take you into that next realm of where you're going. And, and uh, I also got this picture of you uh, leading a group of, of followers. Um, just uh, in the word of, uh, of, of God and taking them into their next journey, their next, their next step into this spiritual realm that uh that you are uh going into is yourself awesome good job all right um why don't you just stretch your hand out why don't you just repeat what i say i release i release and declare and declare freedom from fear a freedom from fear and a boldness and a boldness to step to step into your destiny into your destiny in god in God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Right. Good job. Amen. And the microphone. Well done. Give him a hand, guys. Good job. All right. What'd you see and what'd you hear? Well, um, I heard the word. Man, it's the hot seat. <laughs> <laughs> I heard the word surrender. Um, but I also saw you just standing on top of this really tall cliff, just like spreading your arms out just like god i'm ready to just do whatever you want me to do and um it, it got the feeling of like what he said just like you have stuff that you feel like you need to do and that god's blessed you with but you just don't know exactly what it is yet but you just being in that surrendering state just being ready to do it is just what god is been waiting for and I just speak that over you and just yeah. that he's gonna just give you thoughts dreams and just ideas of what he wants you to do and what your calling is and that he's just gonna bless you and the people around you with that and I just declare that over you in your life in Jesus name amen good job well done. good job guys awesome so I picked uh, you all the way back here. You got the glasses on. You just look. Nope, not you. <laughs> back row. Green shirt. Green shirt. Green shirt. Kneel down. No, you keep looking back. It's you. <laughs> yeah, it's you. <laughs> um, I felt like uh, God said, I see you, but it's not as a way like, I see you from over here. It's, I see you because I'm with you. Wow. And, um, I saw four things. I saw a storm in the middle of the sea, a brick wall, the exit sign, and then this outlet on the floor. I know that's really random, but they all mesh in together. Um, the storm, it just had so many waves. So I was just seeing it as kind of like all these waves of life are just hitting you over and over again. And Jesus wants to let you know that he's your brick wall. He's your strength. He's your exit. He's your outlet that you can vent to. And I just release and declare freedom over you in Christ. I just release, like, Come any on. kind of bondages to be broken right now. Ooh, boy. Man. 
he's just got so much, so much planned for you. And he's just so excited to do life with you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so uh, I just got the word surprise, like, um, <laughs> like, I just get simple words and I'm just going to kind of roll with it. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I just got the word surprise and you were just like, at a, you were like popping out of a giant present and you were just like, surprise, but it was to yourself. <laughs> and, um, yeah, that's just what I got. But I just, de- I just release and declare that like the Lord is going to use this word to just, uh, Reveal new ways of his revelation wow. and new surprises in your life that he has that he has kept not secret but hidden until such times that they need to be released Come in on. Jesus' name. <laughs> guys, stretch your hand out to these guys. I saw you guys like standing on on uh, uh, on the stage of a nation. It's almost like, I don't know what nation, but like on the stage of a nation. And this nation was always saying like, who in the world are these guys and who do they think they are? But, but you, you know who you are. And, and because you know who you are, you speak with spirit and life and authority. And the words that you declare and release over people are gonna shape the course of history for nations. Yeah. And like two flames put together, you guys are like, like burn brighter when you're hanging out. So hang out, hang out with other heavy drinkers that burn. So. <laughs> Ooh, yay. Wow, yeah. All right, good job. Yeah. Wow. I love the guys that buzz and they know it. <laughs> Some of you, listen, some of you used to buzz with joy, this intoxicating joy of the Holy Ghost, and somewhere along the line, somebody came along and killed your buzz. <laughs> God's given it back. God's given it back. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, we're down. Wow, we're, we're at we're the last group. Here we go. Uh, um, you hear me? Yeah, who'd you um, see? Who'd you pick? I picked Gary. Okay. And uh, what, you I got, you what I got, Gary, was uh, you've been gifted with this ability to be a friend. And you have a listening ability that's just unbelievable. And, and it's something you don't even have to work for. Now, I think you already know the power that you have in you. And you already know that you got it. But you can be with, around people without even saying anything. And there's something about you that is calming and peaceful. And you just got to, you're a real good friend and loyal. Mm. And that's what I got on. Come on. Yeah. Go ahead and pass it on. What'd you see and what'd you hear? Uh, I saw Gary walk into a hallway that was going down. And as he went down the Stark hallway, it kept getting lighter and lighter. And at the end, it just was glowing. I don't know what that means. I love that you don't know what that (laughs) means. I got no clue. (laughs) Zip. Sorry. That's awesome. (laughs) That's awesome. Gary, I think you have the ability, and I release the ability for you to go deep. Deep with other people. We just declare that over your life. Come God on. is just going to put that in you to use you to reach others in a very, very heart-to-heart way. Wow. <laughs> Good job, guys. <clears throat> Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Gary, and, and I think for everyone in here, Paul said to Ephesians, in Ephesians 1.17, he prays for this church in Ephesus. And this church is the only church in the Bible that, that Paul didn't correct. <clears throat> but it doesn't mean that they weren't beyond correction. In, in Revelation 2, you know, they forgot their first love, get that. But, but when Paul is praying for this church, they've got all the miracles, healing signs, wonders, got all this stuff. And he prays for them, I feel like a prayer that I want to pray over you and for everybody in here. And that is 
that I pray that God would grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. If I was to make this the most, just to take it as it is, I would say it like this. My prayer is this, that God would grant you an angelic assignment over your life, that all the days of your life would unveil what he's like. That all the days of your life, every moment of confusion that you ever face about who your father is and what he's like and whether or not he's good, there would be assignment, angelic assignment by you that would consistently unveil wisdom and revelation about what he is like, this amazing, extravagant one. I also want to come to agreement with Psalm 23. The last part of Psalm 23 says, Surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. And I just release and declare that over your life there is an angelic assignment. One's name is goodness and the other one's name is mercy. And maybe in your younger days you left a wake of destruction everywhere you went. But no, now it's going to be a different kind of a wake. You're going to have goodness on one side and mercy on the other. And every place that you go, you're going to leave a wake of a revelation of the goodness and the mercy of God. It's what you're meant to do. Spirit of wisdom and revelation and goodness and mercy. Literal named angelic assignments that are are brought into your life, that are assigned to you, that are constantly going to unveil the goodness and the mercy of God all the days of your life. And that would be my prayer for you. That in this freedom conference that you realize that one of the biggest revelations of freedom is that you're never distant or separate from God, but even in that, you never walk alone. You never walk without assistance. You never walk without help. And even though darkness might seek to try to isolate you and bring you into partnership with fear, because you are one with perfect love, fear will always be cast out of your life. Fear will never find a hook in your heart. Fear will never find a place of agreement in your mind. And that's my declaration over you tonight. That you walk completely free from any partnership with a spirit of fear. Because you know or you are, you are one with God in Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. And no matter what you came in here with tonight, there is no demonic force that has the ability to hook your life into a place where you can't see that you're loved by a good God. That you will always feel the embrace in the arms of your Father. And you will always know that you're accepted and he's not ashamed of you. And I said this last night, but I feel so strongly to say this to you tonight. Some of you may find this really hard to believe, but I just want to tell you tonight, God's never been disappointed in you. And right now you can think of all the reasons why God's been disappointed in you. You can think of all the things that maybe you've said or done or activity you've been involved in. You say, but I know that God wasn't for that. Certainly disappointment must be what he felt. But I'm telling you this. So important you catch this. He's not holding your transgressions against you. He's removed your sin from you as far as the east is from the west. And he's deposited not not your own righteousness, his righteousness into you. So that the very identity of the core of your being is that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. And that when he said, be perfect and be holy, he wasn't giving you an assignment to become something. He was telling you who you are right now from heaven's perspective. He was trying to reveal to you what he sees when he looks at you, that you are perfect and you are holy. Why? Because your father is perfect and your father is holy and you're made in his image and likeness. And he's committed to stripping off of you every identity that would exalt itself against a revelation of what he sees. Some of you have read scriptures that say about all the things that won't inherit the kingdom of God. These things, these liars, fornicators, adulterers, thieves, people disobedient to parents. We're all on that list. Did you know that? Asked the Holy Spirit one time, what's it about that list? I heard God speak to me and said, I've never made a single one of those. I never created any of those. I never decided one day I'm going to create a thief. I'm going to create an adulterer. I'm going to create a murderer. All of those are are identities that life has pinned to you, lies and labels that maybe your behavior, the behavior of someone else has pinned to you and you've adopted those. And when God says none of those identities will inherit the kingdom of God, it's not a threat. It's a promise that your inheritance of the kingdom of God means that he's stripping away every false identity that he never gave you. And that you're going to walk into a fullness revelation of his presence without any hindrance or blindness of who you really are. That's the promise of that. And some of you are saying, I don't, even, I don't know if I could even possibly be worthy of this. 
I'll leave you with this. Jesus begins his earthly ministry by saying, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me, and he has anointed me to preach the gospel, proclaiming freedom and liberty to captives and prisoners. Captives and prisoners are two different kinds of people. Captives are held bound because of what somebody else has done. It wasn't your fault. Somebody else did something to you, and now you're paying the price for somebody else's choice. It's oftentimes what opens the doorway of demonic influence in your life. Somebody else did something, and now you're carrying an offense. Now you have something to forgive. It was their fault. It wasn't your fault. And you're held bound because of what somebody else has done. You know, justice would say, you should go free. It wasn't fair. What happened to you wasn't fair, and you should go free. You're a captive. But then there's the other kind of person, and it's a prisoner. And prisoners are usually in captivity because of what they have done. It was their fault. And our sense of justice would say captives should go free, but prisoners get to do the time. But here's what Jesus said. I have a job, and that is this, to proclaim freedom and liberty to captives and prisoners. In other words, listen, I don't care how you got in chains. Maybe it was your fault. Maybe it was somebody else's fault. If I see chains on you, I'm setting them free. I don't care whose fault it was. Why? Because the ultimate goal for Christ is that you walk in complete freedom. Unhindered, unbroken communion with the heart of God. Unhindered, unbroken access with the love of God. And maybe you've been held back from that because of what somebody else has done, or maybe you've been held back because of what you have done. And tonight there's one word that God has declared over your life, and that is this. Freedom. Freedom. Freedom, liberty, liberty, liberty. He sees you as free. He doesn't want you to walk any other way than free, holy, righteous, pure, and perfect. And none of that has anything to do with anything you have done. It has everything to do with what he has done. Because of what he has done, you can be who you really are. So tonight I want to finish like this. Micah, based on what I just said, that declaration of freedom, I just love the prophetic gift on your life and just love the time I've gotten a chance to hang out with you. I'd like you just to make a declaration of freedom. However the Holy Spirit begins to speak through you to do it, I'd like you just to make a declaration of freedom over... You guys must know something I don't know. I want you to go ahead and all stand, would you? All right, and when you get done with this, you can pass it back to Pastor Van or however you want to do it. Let's just see what the Holy Spirit does. But I want you to make a declaration of freedom yes. from a recognized prophetic voice in this house. I think it's really a, mm-hmm. a big deal that this happens right now. Yeah. Um, I'll, just say, um, I'll just say that what was, what was neat of what was going on, there were just a band, there were like a band of angels that were just above all of you. Okay, and they were literally shouting, freedom! They were just saying that over and over and over and over again. So I just want you guys to hold your hands out. Like you're doing, okay? (laughs) Like you're doing. So in the name of Jesus, I declare over you freedom in Jesus' name. Liberty to explore. Liberty to explore. Encounter with God. Every chain is broken. You are people who see. You are people who hear. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, glory come right now. Glory come right now. Fire from heaven right now. Power from the throne of God, the lightnings and the thunderings from the throne of God right now in Jesus' name. Places of encounter. A church of encounters. In Jesus' name. And I release to you right now the angels of the Lord. 
the angels of the Lord to surround you, to encounter you day and night. In Jesus' name, amen.